We are now going to factor a little bit more difficult of a trinomial, specifically that of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And notice in this case, the a is a non-1 number. So we want to know how to take something like 5x squared plus 7x plus 2 and turn it into something that's factored. And I'm going to show you a method that I helped develop and create, and I call it synthetic factoring. And this is a lot different than other methods you may have seen, but if you get the hang of it, it's real easy. So we start by taking the first number and multiplying it by the last number. 5 times 2 equals 10. Now we take our 10 and we do what we did before. We break our 10 down into factors of 10, 1 and 10, 2 and 5, minus 1, don't know why that wrote down there, minus 1 and minus 10, and minus 2 and minus 5. And we add these together. 1 plus 10 is 11, 2 and 5 is 7, minus 11, minus 7. We want the one that matches our middle, just like before. And that's the positive 7. So this is our row. So if that 5 wasn't in front, or if we had x squared plus 7x plus 10, we'd factor as x plus 5 and x plus 2, just like we have our 2 and our 5 here. But with that 5 in front, this is where everything changes. We take our winning combination, the 2 and the 5, and we grab that first number 5, and we divide both of our factors by it. 2 over 5 and 5 over 5. Then we reduce our fraction. 5 over 5 becomes 1 over 1. And this is where the really cool thing comes in. We take the number on bottom, and it goes in front of our variable. So the 5 on 1 and the 1 from the other. We take the number on top, and we add it after. So 5x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 1. And we should always check our answer. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x. 2 times 1x is 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. So notice we get back to our original, 5x squared plus 7x plus 2 by using this. So again, that key was multiply the first and the last to create a single number. Break down that number as we did before, looking for factors of that number that add up to the middle. Once we have our factors, divide them both by the lead number, reduce any fractions, and the number on bottom goes to the front, the number on top is added after. One other really nice thing that you can do double, to double check, multiply the 5 and the minus 1 from the bottom, or the positive 1 from the bottom, 5 times 1 is 5. Multiply the top together, 2 times 1 is 2. Notice we have a 5 on the front and a 2 on the back. The top numbers multiply to the last one, the bottom numbers multiply to the first one. And if that's the case, then you know you've done it correctly. Let's look at another example. Suppose we have 3p squared minus 4p minus 4, and we're asked to factor this. Well, we do the same thing. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Factors of minus 12 that add up to minus 4 have to be one positive, one negative, and the bigger one is going to be negative because it follows the sign in the middle. So negative 6 and 2. Well, first one worked. Minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. So we grab that first number again, and we divide both of them by 3. Minus 6 divided by 3 reduces to minus 2 over 1. 2 over 3 stays the same. Again, notice minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. 1 times 3 is 3, so we know this will work. The number on bottom goes in front of the x. The number on top is added after. Same thing here, number on bottom, and I shouldn't be using x, I should be using the variable we started with, which is p. Number on top gets added after. We can drop the 1, because we don't need a 1 in front of a variable. p times 3p is 3p squared, plus 2p, minus 6p, minus 4, which combines back to 3p squared, minus 4p, minus 4. And so this is, again, what we call synthetic factoring. First times last for a number. Split that number up until it adds up to what's in the middle. 
then number on bottom goes in front, number on top follows after. Write your factors, check your work, make sure it matches what you started with, and if it does, then you're done.